Greetings fellow humans and welcome to more tea with JD and this time around we're going to be talking about my best books of 2018. A couple of disclaimers. These books weren't necessarily published in 2018. Actually, odds are huge that they were not published in 2018 because I rarely uh, grab a book once it's out or brand new. I'm weird that way. And a lot of people and a lot of books are back catalogs. Um, I don't mind doing it that way. Some people need what's, what's, what's hot out of the oven. I don't know. Who knows? Anyways, uh, rather than a top 10 or a top 5 or a top whatever, I want to uh, share my 20 favorite books from 2018. Instead of choosing any type of preference, I did it alphabetically so I wouldn't get into trouble with anyone and so that my conscience could be at ease. Anyways. First off, in the A's, we have Anarfel by Joshua Robertson and J.C. Boyd. It's a high fantasy book. I'd been meaning to, to read something from Josh for a long time. Uh, I finally met him last year at a really small but interesting convention here in Atlanta. And I picked up a ton of books. The first one I read is Anarfel. Um, I will be reading more of his books, but that's the first one I chose. Um, it's dark as hell. It's so dark. If you like books that are dark, this one is for you. Uh, the protagonists, because I can't say heroes, the protagonists aren't necessarily the most likable people. And I think that's what's interesting because it's a character exploration of um, Drass and Tyron, uh, which they're not, they're not good people for different reasons. Uh, they want to please their dad to no end. And it brings, a, uh, it brings around some really heinous things that happen. But yeah, interesting, compelling read. World building is top notch. Um, solid. If you like high, high fantasy and want something dark where you won't necessarily root <laughs> for the protagonist, uh, pick that one up. Number two is Beast of Burden. It's a graphic novel. Uh, by the way, I'll put the links down below uh, to my reviews. Um, man, one of several library reads that I got in one of the best graphic novels I read last year. Uh, Beast of Burden, um, there's a bunch of books that are saving the world um, in their community. Um, and it's dark, but really interesting. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's a brilliantly dark graphic um, graphic novel. It's compelling, it's gripping, but it's just the, the character development of the different dogs is brilliant and the artwork is sensational. But you feel for the dogs and the different things that they experience. Uh, number three, Blue is the Warmest Color. It's a graphic novel uh, for the LGBTQA community. Um, reading this as a heterosexual male, I do, do think it might give some type of insight. I read other reviews and some people say that the, the author was manipulating your emotions and playing you and I'm like, I didn't feel that at all. I'd like to see your thoughts on it. If you've read it or seen the movie, I haven't seen the movie. Um, but it's intense. It's heartfelt. It feels real. Um, I I have a lot of friends from from that are that I are either gay, lesbian, or I I don't have transgender friends. Um, I do have asexual friends and I do have bisexual friends as well. But I don't have I don't think I have a transgender friend or or that I know of. Um, I I mentioned that because it's always interesting to get the perspective from different people in terms of of agender or asexuality, which are different things that are now in, in you know, being defined and definitely things to, to consider because it's it, it's good to learn new things and how to communicate with people. Um, number four is The Brotherhood of Secrets, which is by Christy Stratos. Uh, Christy is my favorite indie author. She's one of my favorite authors. Uh, her first book, Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, is fantastic. Brotherhood of Secrets, um, I love it as well, but it's it's a different thing. It's it's not apples and apples. And they're both psychological, they're both dark, but there are actually characters that you really like in Brotherhood of Secrets. And in Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, uh, there's a lot of darkness going around. Um, to see how those two books connect in the dark Victoriana world is really fascinating, and, and she's a lead, period. <clears throat> Um, number five is kind of a cheat because I put Bone uh, Volumes 1 and 2, which are graphic novels, 
had a lot of fun with that series, bot number three. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. It's quirky, it's silly, but it's interesting. And underneath all that silliness and and fun artwork, there's, there's some really interesting social commentary. Uh, number six is Death Note Volume 2, which, which is actually, um, I decided to read that series at, at Barnes & Noble. I still buy books at Barnes & Noble, but that series, um, it, 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 it has made uh, enough money already. So I decided to read it in store and see how that experience is like. And it's been interesting. Um, I think Volume 2 is more solid than the first one because the uh, Volume 1 had a plot twist that uh, I was like, man, you took one of the most compelling characters and what, what happened there? What happened there? Uh, the second one had uh, surprises, and I think that the use of the different characters and how they evolved, uh, Light and and L, are fascinating. So, yeah. Number seven, uh, Fred Pickle Noir. <laughs> Jeremy Mounts is a cookie guy. He's the pickle guy. Um, he has graphic novels that are there. You can't fit one more pun in them, either. Uh, written or visual puns it's just to me it's like a dad joke that ran away um, and had a family I had a I had a lot of fun with that graphic novel every time I see the graphic novel I chuckle um, he's a cool guy um, I'm always gonna probably pick up a book every time I see him because if you're affable if you're likable and you have something interesting and different to to offer I'm gay uh, number eight is <clears throat> Um, Goodbye Darkness, Hello Light by a fellow uh, indie author, Aaron. Aaron is, is, is lovely and that collection, um, it's just intimate and honest and that's, that's very lovely. Um, and I like poetry like that. Uh, sometimes I like poetry that is made to impress me. But um, this one is made to share something really intimate, really personal. People are outside. Uh, number nine, La Gran Muralla de la Ciudad Corazón, which are short stories uh, in Spanish by my good friend Maricel Jimenez. It also includes one English story uh, at the end. But I like people to broaden their horizons and, and offer me something new. And I, I enjoy Maricel's writing a lot. And it was good. To, it was interesting to read her in Spanish as well, uh, so that I can also uh, compare myself uh, and how I write in English and how I write in Spanish. and, and it's not exactly the same, but you see the nuances that, that we focus on in each language, and that's pretty interesting. More of that, Mari. Uh, number 10, The House at Pooh Corner. I love Pooh, uh, which is a great sentence to, to quote me out of context, uh, but I love Winnie the Pooh, and that second collection was adorable. I'll leave it at that. If, you, if, you, if you're a fan of Winnie the Pooh, you're going to like the books. Simple. Number 11, Keith and Quintero and the Sky Phantoms. This middle gray sci-fi is from uh, another friend, uh, author friend from Puerto Rico, another Puerto Rican indie author friend. Fr -fr -fr -fr. Puerto Rican indie author friend. Ah, I was able to say it. That was a loud whistle. Uh, okay, so if you like Robotech, Honestly, it, it just echoes that, and it and it's set in Puerto Rico, so that's pretty cool. If you want, if you want, like you know, middle grade sci-fi that has that Robotech feel and that is set in Puerto Rico, uh, by all means check it out. I think it's a it's a cool book. Uh, I think it's, I think younger audiences can really enjoy that, and I'm not that young, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, number twelve, Gurin Tornyusi, uh, High Fantasy by Aaron Michael Hall. Uh, I met Aaron uh, last year as well at Jordan Con uh, here in Atlanta. Uh, it was one of the most surprising reads, not because I don't think she has the potential to write, but because it was really, really uh, high level. Uh, it's it, High fantasy is hit or miss, and she really hit. Um, villains are very villainy. Uh, world building is fantastic. Uh, the magic system is really interesting, and the, the dialogue and the plot is really interesting. I was really impressed, and I can't stress that she, you know, if, if you're in Atlanta, you see her in, a, in an event, please pass by her booth. Please say hello. She's one of the nicest people I've met. And I've met some fantastic people, uh, but uh, she's just she's just a sweetheart and so talented. I can't say it enough. Uh, number 13, Mort. 
<clears throat> uh, Discworld, I'm, I'm a late entry into Discworld. Um, I'm an idiot for taking so long in, in, for, uh, to get into Discworld, but it is sensational. And Terry Pratchett, um, I don't think there's a writer that I enjoy more in, in terms of what he can do with a sentence, in terms of subject, verb, predicate. Um, there might be more compelling stories or in storylines, but in terms of what you can do and be quotable, damn, is he good. Um, seriously, it's the fourth book I read, fourth I enjoy, every book I like even more. I can't wait to get to Sorcery, which is Book World, this, uh, Disc World, uh, book five. Um, I'll let you know how that goes. Number 14, No Cierres Los Ojos, a horror short story compilation from Puerto Rico. It is a very Puerto Rican book. If you speak Spanish and you want something that's creepy and feels very authentically Puerto Rican, that was, I was really impressed. And that book just printed gorgeously, gorgeously. Uh, I'm going to be doing reviews of these books. Um, that's why I'm not showing all of them right now. But Damn, what, it, it, it was really solid. Um, being a short story collection, there's probably going to be stories that you enjoy more than others. I, that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, but I think that the quality of the overall content is really high. And I was really impressed that, you know, fellow, fellow Puerto Rican authors are saying, let's do something different and not do typical Puerto Rican literature. That was really refreshing. So cheers to them. And who knows, there might be surprises in my future. Uh, number 15, Perfect Break uh, by Anais Cherchenko. I have rained praise for Anais Cherchenko and I will continue to do so because her poetry is just, to me, stunning. Um, I like that she really commits to a concept. And Perfect Break is a young adult novel in verse form. So basically you have two best friends that are communicating one to the other via text or email, and those are the poems. One is <clears throat> one of the gals is having a good time. She moved over uh, to the West Coast and the other got left behind and is not doing so well. The personality of each voice is very unique. Uh, the, the, the playful names that they have for each other is also very unique. Um, I think it's a beautifully written and told story that invites you to obviously fill in the gaps, but to enjoy the poetry of what a friendship can be. Um, really impressed, but with Anais, that's, that's par for the course. I can't wait to read Liminal Hymns. Uh, which I will be ordering soon. Uh, I will read that one this year, period. Um, what can I say? You know, every single collection that I've read, I've, I've been really impressed. So that's, it's it's really cool to have friends um, with that level of talent that you don't have to say something because they're your friends. They're, they're just wildly talented. <clears throat> Speaking of which, uh, Pink Plastic House, another poetry collection uh, by Kristen Garth. Uh, Kristen is a self-described um, woman child. Um, she, her background is intense. Um, she's gone through some stuff. Um, Pink Plastic House is absolutely brilliant. It's a very genuine voice. It's a very intense read. Um, Everything comes from experience. She's very, she's very kind. She's very engaging, um, just a sweetheart, and it has a real way with words. Um, again, it, it's just, just goes to show that <clears throat> poetry can be so many things, and Kristen definitely explores things that I've never read before. Uh, the copy that I received actually had annotations from her and that adds a, a level of it to the experience. Honestly, if you're going to pick up one of her books, uh, order directly from her or a website where it's, it, they get annotated. I think it adds such a, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And it's very personal and, and it's not, it's not boilerplate stuff. She annotates each copy that she sends out, which is nuts, but I like that. Um, number 17. Portraits of uh, Dread. This short story collection by Michael J. Elliott. 
might be cataloged as horror, but I really think that Michael uh, has a lot more to offer than just horror stories. Yes, there are horror stories here that are creepy as hell, but I think that I want him to, to not label himself just as a horror writer. Um, there's a very touching, very gut-wrenching, heartbreaking story here, but it is beautiful. I won't say which. I invite you to, to, to read this collection. Um, Michael is a cool guy from Australia. Um, he's got a lot to offer and I can't wait to read something else by him. Uh, number 18 is Writing from the Restless. Uh, Brittany Moore is also an indie author and I'm also recommending her short story collection because it shows, it's, it's not a perfect book, but it shows a lot of potential and it was interesting because for being short stories and poetry, even the short stories are very personal. And I like that. I like that a lot that she's not afraid to go there. Um, and she went there and it's a very lovely book. Uh, number 19 is Zodiac by Romina uh, Garber. She's an Argentinian um, author. I think she's based in Florida now. I'm not exactly sure. Um, it's super sweet uh, her book does have some YA tropes that you might groan at beyond those tropes there's a very deep and beautiful philosophy that you can just lose yourself in I was really impressed by her quotable moments are stellar even and, and I know it's the zodiac and astrological signs sorry for the pun uh, it wasn't on purpose but um, <clears throat> the underlying exploration of human philosophy in that, in that series can't be denied. I'm curious to see how she evolves the arc in books two, three, and four. Uh, I have the second one at home. I, I really want to get to read that soon. Time has just been scarce. Scarce. What, what happened there? Scarce. Enjoy the muck up. But still, uh, Romina, very, very cool human. Uh, very family oriented and you can see in some of uh, her characters that comes through um, and finally number 20 zoo uh, by Ogden Nash it's called Ogden Nash zoo it's cheeky funny silly poetry and sometimes you need you need a laugh you need something silly, silly to laugh and I think it's a great book for anyone who wants to get into poetry and wants something lighthearted and fun and very silly um, so those are the 20 books Links are down below. I'll link to the blog post where there's more information. Actually, I'm going to link to the blog post. In the blog post, all the links are there because I this is it's a lot of text and I don't know if I'm going to have enough space to do that. So go to the blog spot, you know, blog post, um, and the title of of the the book will lead you to my review if you're interested in that, or just go to Goodreads and see what I reviewed. Anyways. Hope you enjoyed this. What were your favorite reads from 2018? Um, I'd love to know. I'd love to chat it out. I'm tired, it's been a long week. I'd love to chat it down in the sexy comment section down below. Until next time, peace, love, and my girls.